three, two, three, two, one, and we go. All right, hello everybody. Uh, once again, thank you for showing up for another one of our series here at the Film Roundtable. Um, uh, so my guests for today, uh, two really good people, friends of mine as well. We've got Adam Sumner. Uh, Adam, raise your hand and wave. I got two Adams here, it's gonna be tricky. There's Mr. Sumner, everybody. Uh, he's producer and assistant director for most recently the likes of Steven Spielberg and Paul Thomas Anderson. His credit list is way too big for me to list here. You guys wanna dig in deeper? Go IMDB him, you'll, uh, you'll learn a lot. Um, also, we've got a dear friend of mine, Adam Stockhausen. We started out in this business many, many years ago. There he is. Um, Adam is a production designer du jour, works with Wes Anderson and Steven Spielberg as well. Um, and of course, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's won some nice little awards that we'll get to probably later on. Um, so virtual applause, because I know everyone out there is giving you guys a good round and you can't see it and feed off of it, but trust me, there's people out there who uh, we thank you all for coming. Um, now, as always, for those of you that have been following us on the film roundtable, um, we're all here. Uh, all of us people in the film industry are all together and not working because of the COVID lockdown. So we always find it important just to give everyone a sense of, you know, how this uh, how this um, virus is 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 doing and what it's doing to the world. Um, as of today, we are at 526,000 worldwide deaths. Um, just to give everyone a sense of scope, when we had our first webinar on June 17th with Reed and Brad, we are up nearly 100,000 deaths from June 17th. So uh, that's something for us all to keep in mind. Um, uh, also, uh, as we know, because of a lot of the social movement that's going on out there, we would like to honor all of our black, brown, and brown brothers and sisters, as well as our First Nation brothers and sisters, whose lives have been taken at the hands of police brutality and all senseless acts of violence here and around the world, not just in the US. People continue to march for some social change. And you know, we really think that uh, you know, we're, people believe we're on the cusp of some changes here. So before we begin, just in the virtual world as always, let's just have a moment of silence together, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And as people out in the round film roundtable world know, it's always important for us just to start off with a little bit of that before we uh, get into the discussion with our friends here and hopefully imparting some knowledge for those of you that have, you know, joined in to uh, be with us. Um, one, you know, first question I'm going to have is for both of you is, uh, you know, you've all, you've both been home. We've all been part of this lockdown. And I know uh, Mr. Sumner, for you, this is a big change. You haven't been put on ice this long in your career in a, in a very <laughs> long time. So uh, I'll Indeed. start with you. So what's it like to be home and not working for this stretch of time? Um, well, I think it's been a test, hasn't it? I mean, every, but there's always people who have things harder. So I think one always remembers, you know, I'm actually reasonably lucky, you know, and it's been fantastic to be with my family. I mean, I mean, I do have... You know, I have a kid, a uh, daughter who's nine and a, and a son who's three. So I, and I think I know parents who've been <laughs> locked down with young kids, young, young kids. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, pressure on you. And it's, uh, it's stressful, you know, to, to try and be a good dad and be that. And then it's just, it's hard without any other release. And you're, you know, you're trying to not put that TV on as long as you can and inspire, but it's, it's tough, but it's been great. And I think I've been lucky enough to sort of, mostly make you know make the most of it as much as I can I mean I haven't learned Italian or something but I've <laughs> done a bit of gardening and composting and I've been with my kid and I've done a little bit of work with scheduling stuff to keep my hand in but I've been getting up I've been working longer hours than I was shooting I mean when I'm working normally I mean I get up at 4 a.m or 4 30 to do paperwork because when my kids are up that's it for the day virtually you're done you know so so it's but like you know it's been interesting. It's been a test, but it's, and but luckily we've all got we've gone through it, and we I think we've been luckier than many other people, you know, for having a garden and a bit of you know somewhere to go out a little bit. So 
it's, it's just amazing those in the industry with small children who oftentimes spend a lot of time on the road. We've all kind of become to appreciate the work that our significant others are able to do when we're not around, you know, it's, 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 it's not an easy task. I'm, I'm with you. Um, not all. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, uh, Mr. Stockhausen, what about yourself, my friend? What are you What have you been doing now in this downtime? Um, yeah, I mean, there, 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 there's well, there's been there's been some little work ongoing, so it, you know, it's um, it, it's been staying busy, and there's been an element that's very nice because you know when you travel so often, it is great to be at home, and it and it's sort of it's great to have some time uh, to actually be here, and and as Adam says, to to be gardening, but uh, but. You know, but of course, there's all the the, the the difficulty that's going on, and there's separation from family too. Um, and so, even though I'm like geographically in you know in New York, where I, where where I live, but you still can't you still can't see family the way you want to, and that um, that's very difficult. And so, you know, it's a struggle. Yeah, yeah, that's that's always the difficult part of it. As much as we find that yes, we've got this time, you realize you know, especially a lot of us who have you know extended family, it's you know you're you're not really with your whole family. You're just with your immediate pod, as they say. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that has really been developing as an undercurrent in these discussions that we've been going through um, and is the idea of teamwork. You know, we've had a lot of people come on, work together, uh, talk together, who've worked on projects together um, and have come up in their careers together in certain aspects. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's something that we're really trying to talk about for a lot of the the younger people out there who tune in to kind of like hold people like yourselves in such reverence because of the people that you work with. And we've always trying to make it understood to everyone that, you know, it's, it's, it's not a singular game. It's like, there's a lot of moving gears behind the magician, a lot of people that work in tandem and as a team to kind of, you know, help the director um, bring the vision forward. Um, I'm particularly interested with the two of you since, you know, most currently you've both worked with us on I believe it three projects, right? With Steven, Steven Spielberg, three projects. Mm -hmm. Most recently, probably the one you can't talk about being West Side Story, um, but also on Bridge of Spies and Ready Player One, right? I have that correct, right? That's right, yeah. All right, so um, just curious. I mean, Adam Sumner, from your standpoint, I mean, your relationship with the production designer, you having worked with, you know, Stockhausen several times. I mean, you know, just talk about that for a little bit. Um, I, but it, it's, a, it's been for me in many films I've done um, an essential relationship at the start of the film. And I mean, specifically, say, with, with the idea of working with Stephen um, and the way he works. And our first, our first experience was, you know, on Bridge of, on Bridge of Spies. And um, when we started that movie, you know, we've, we've We've often with Stephen, with his busyness and his situation working with the script and stuff, it's often uh, come the, the custom that, you know, that I would go off with the, the production designer ahead and, you know, try and map out the film using, you know, using his note, using his boards or notes or script and the script and of course, and sort of make a plan that was sort of production savvy, watertight. And then in that plan, have options of which ways to go that could be more expensive, less expensive. Just pr propose the path forward. And that became, obviously, with the production designer, that's essential because, where, you know, just basically where you're going to do things, how can you combine things, how do you turn around sets, where can, where can production savings and necessities um, be protected, and when are you then, on the other hand, having to protect clear art department issues with set turnarounds, big sets next to each other and scheduling weekends and all the elements. And it really is, but the film is cre sort of created, I suppose, you know, with the director and the designer and, and you know, and it, it might sometimes with me as an AD slash producer type person, you know, when I have a bit more say with, say with Stephen, because of my relationship, the one presents this plan. And I think with Adam and the designer, and as previously with Brick Carter and, um, and, you know, and, and Chris Seegers and other designers I've worked with and Guy Diaz and people, these relationships are very important and they're very crucial because you really are in the early stages where from the concept of the film in the budgeting and producerial stages and the big picture to the reality of actually building the, the movie and all the pressures of locations, cost of locations, tax rebates and 
and balancing up everything to sort of, you know, present. And that's, that is definitely a part of this huge teamwork and the, and the enjoyment of that can be because you know, human, humanity's sake of just working closely with people is what is, what is good in life, that relationships with people and never mind in the film industry, but camaraderie and, um, you know, just that, and, and a good working environment. And, and in the film industry, it's, it, it's, it's very clear, it's required and, and special. So that's, you know, that's my view on it really, I think. And if I could kind of jump in on that, it's, it's important to understand that what, what Adam is describing here, we're together kind of trying to find locations and trying to figure things out before there is a plan, right? So there is, there's no framework existing to, to hang this on and say, this is how the movie's going to be. We're going to shoot this much here and this much here. We're actually trying to figure out those things to say, well, you know, we've looked at it and we think a chunk of the movie could be here and a chunk of the movie could be here. And that leaves us scratching our head about you know, about the missing piece and we've got to figure that out. And okay, okay, what do we do? You know, how do we, how do we approach that problem? And we go figuring it out. Um, and and what, we're, what we're building at that stage of, of the process is, is the basics, is the like, okay, well, we're gonna hire a crew here and we're gonna plan to shoot here for X number of weeks. And we're starting to build those, those very basic building blocks of, of uh, what's eventually going to be the, the, the shooting process for the film. Yeah, and I think that's a really interesting thing, especially for young filmmakers to understand that even at the level, you know, once the movies even get bigger and bigger, it's not all of a sudden that, you know, everything becomes easier. It's almost still like that initial idea when there are just a small handful of people trying to make a movie. And yeah. it's like, okay, where can we shoot for free? What can we write in this location? What we can, you know, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a movie with a budget, but it's still within those things of how do we build a plan mm -hmm. to make this movie, you know? So it's those things that you learn on the, on the very small level. This is what my career has taught me are the things that really help you out as the projects get bigger and bigger, because, you know, you kind of, you know, you understand how to be versatile, right? That's very yeah. important. Absolutely. And everything, you know, any situation that's going to be successful, like really successful, is going to be something that works from multiple different angles where you can be clever and you can say, okay, we're going to land the company here and, and, and then we go over here and we can not just do one little thing and then have to pick up and move again because that gets very expensive. But we're going to land here and then look at the like crazy origami that we can do to twist and turn and get nine different things uh, mm -hmm. uh, very, very efficiently. And sort of building that kind of system is um, is really enjoyable, and it and it and it and it's something that we do collaboratively together, you know, early on in the process. No, and I think it's like as an AD when you're scheduling a movie, you know, it's one of those things is you know you schedule a movie, and I'm still do it, and you still you know you build it, you break a script down, and then to move forward, you 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 know you have to make decisions, you, and you go with your gut or your sort of experience, and you know oh, this should be built, this shouldn't be, this should be a location, this should be whatever, and that obviously also depends on the director's style that you you hopefully have some relationship or idea, or he's he's outlined some certain things, but still you're sort of as an idea, kind of on your own a bit when you're breaking down the plan, and you know you have to make a plan, and it can be wrong and. And for ADs, I was as I've learned, you just have a go. You know, you may you just got to find the theory or the, the you know, the uh, the equation that you say, oh, I'm going to do this, and, that, and you make this equation, and that could be the film. Now, this films could be made in many different ways and many different styles between you know, CGI enhancement or going to a location or real crowd or CGI. Every director, and, and you know, which is great about being an AD, is you different directors have a different style and different use of technology and the way they, they, they use the medium. So, but the production designer is your first mate, the first person beyond when you've been scheduling it, you've been told by the producers and you've been told by people, whatever you've been given, he's the first person that actually you, you go to work with and start to, to plan the film. And, and the reassurance is to have someone you can check things with and, and, the, and that fantastic thing where you both come out with the same idea and you go, oh, no, no, and you, the reassurance it gives you, oh, I, I, I got it right again, good, you know, whatever it is. But, <laughs> but I think it's, you know, it's a it's a friend and a friend it's a friend and the first person you work with and on a movie in a sense as an ad for that real you know doing the job of obviously giving the director the vision you know of, you know yeah it, that's so. a that's a really good point because you know i've i've always taken it from the standpoint that and as you said because you know as an ad you start so much like a, a lonely figure right with all this stuff in your head and you're looking for the verification of someone else 
to be like, yeah, that's going to work. And then like a kid, you're like, yes, yes, that's going to be great. Like I always say, I always hold the analogy for me. It's like, I feel like in like the AD, when we're building a schedule, you're like an old school safe cracker. And it's not until you hear the, the it all starts yeah. to click together that, you know, all right, I, I can, this is cracked. I can do it. And a lot of times that doesn't happen until, as you said, you're able to sit down or you have a relationship with the production designer and they're able to, you know, validate what you're thinking that's a very important step and uh, it's something that i think a lot of people you know should realize because trust me i've been on the other end where you know you have production designers who are just you know about their style and this that and the other and you get no help from them and then you feel like wow i'm really alone on this one i gotta really you know make yeah. sure you're all protected you know yeah yeah but it also you know it also and it becomes like a friendship you know i've done a film you know well, back when, you know, the production designer was great, but he was struggling, you know, and in, in, in that situation, you know, my job was to support him, you know, it was like, you know, to drag him up and grab him and say, come on, let's, you know, don't fall behind, let's go, you know, and he was, he wanted, I mean, he was on a movie and he wanted, I'm not going to talk about who it was, it doesn't, you know, no, but anyway, it's just about friendship, you know what I mean, because suddenly, you know, you want everyone to, you know, you want everyone to succeed as well as people and, and as workers in, in, the, in the film experience, and so, it's never good to see someone down. And if you see someone, you help. And then that was a case where I could help. And uh, and many a time the designers done me a favor as well and helped me through. So it's been, you know, it's, it's a friendship on both work and a and level of humanity, which is really great. And with Adam, I've been very lucky to have that sort of friendship, you know? Yeah, so no, it's, uh, you're absolutely right about that. I do remember, you know, one of my first mentors telling me very early on, in the prep game, it's the production designer's movie. When you start shooting, then the first AD takes over, you know? And mm -hmm. then, I, and then, and, and it, was, it was such a black and white way of looking at it. And then I, I've since realized, no, that's not really the right thing. The right thing is, you know, the togetherness factor on both sides of it. Because even once you start shooting, there's so many things that happen, especially as you know, when it's like, you know, you gotta go A, B, you gotta go B, C, D deep in your pocket with a plan as things start to unravel. And then you still need the production designer to be part of that algorithm to help to make sure that, you know, the steps you're taking are gonna work. So, you know, I think it is, it's a relationship that's very important in prep and it's equally as important once the shooting starts, you know. Um, I had a question now, interestingly enough, we. Now, obviously, uh, one of the questions I was curious about, Adam, is you've also been doing a lot of work in your career with Wes. Wes has been a director, you know, Anderson, that really kind of where you got a good start with and, and, and came up with. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, and people have been sending in some questions. We're very curious about your relationship with Wes because they know that he's so, he so laser focuses in on design right, and all of his stuff. He's got a very centric style so how is that relationship obviously it's very different than the one with steven but how, how does that one work with you you know uh you know i mean it, it's the same process really uh, you know with working working with anybody because i think i think um i think you're what what you're trying to do is to take what's on the page and figure out and present the the really good options for for how to how to turn that into a system that can be that can be shot with you know building this and finding this and assembling this and this part and recycling this thing after we've shot it once we can figure it out and twist it and turn it and make another thing and that that that's kind of the same I mean there's a, there, there's a, there's a there's a slightly different um, uh, approach uh, specifically with Wes it, or, or because we we start digging into individual frames right away you know and so it's sort of this uh shot by shot by shot development um the kind of the way you would on an animated film where and then stitching those pieces together um rather than what you will often do uh, uh, on, on another film you'll you'll sort of figure out a, a basic shell of something and then put it aside and then kind of come back to it later to figure out the individual angles and the individual sequence development um uh with Wes, will very often the sequences will break apart, and an individual, an individual scene will be a location in this direction, but a miniature in this direction, and a stage set in this direction. And so that that takes a bit more front end figuring, you know, um, uh, to, to to see how that's going to work. Uh, but 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 the actual process of 
talking about the work, what the work is about, and looking at imagery to to start to 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 bring that forward is 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 very much the the same the same process. And almost in the same vein, Adam, for you, because you know people are curious. You also you have a long-standing relationship with Paul Thomas Anderson, who you know is very involved, so much so involved in the lighting of his movies that he's actually started shooting his own movies. So yeah. how, how has that evolved, especially on something like Phantom Thread, where he was the DP director, he's wearing two hats. How does that change for you in terms of approaching the days? Um no, no, not particular, actually not particularly particularly bad in fact it makes it simpler it's made it you know it actually i think it takes out one level of of complication in a way and um because now you're talking to one person and he and also as the writer of the material he, he there's never a question about the material in the sense of how he feels about it and where he's meant to be and, and how it's sitting at that that point um there's obviously always chances of things that happen during filming a scene of course but but excuse me. But the plan is it's pretty strong in the sense of where it's come from on that le creative level. And then shooting wise, say on Phantom Fred. Previous to that, we'd, we'd shot um, several sort of music videos with uh, Tom York and um, um, the Heim um, sisters, the band, the, the the LA band, and so. Paul had started shooting himself and, and, and that was refreshing and that was good and that was a good test and and in a way it also made it took out a little element say an element of tension that you that can that was maybe coming in with Paul was you know his his views on lighting and how he wanted to light a thing working with a cameraman suddenly there would obviously be there would obviously be differences of opinion with, with, with method and look and stuff. So in a sense, you had a, maybe a more of a creative conflict possible there in that situation. I'm being very politically calm and sort of general about the situation, but you know, there's sometimes it's what, you know, the one, what you need one person in every sort of leadership position in a way and one clear sight. And, and when that happens, it, you can have an easy, it's an easier process, whoever, whoever is lighting the film. And I think that was enjoyable. And that was sort of, um, you know, that was, um, made the experience a good experience on Phantom Fred, you know, I think. Yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, and you're absolutely right, because, you know, we've all worked, you know, it's, you know, as, as the creative element of, you know, the directors that we partner with, you know, and some of them are very actor centric, some of them become very camera lighting centric, and we've all seen that. So I can totally see how what you're saying is, it totally cuts through that if you've got a guy who's like, listen, I know how I want to like the scene, you know, let's go with it. That's, you know, essentially is those who've worked with Soderbergh in the same type of vein where it's like, oh, you know, yeah, one voice, one voice telling the story, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And absolutely. No, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I, you know, it's Adam, I think the, the first thing you and I did was, was, was it 12 years or was it Wes's no, movie? No, it was My Soul to Take. My Soul to Take was the first thing we did. Um, but then I distinctly remember on, on, on 12 Years a Slave, which, we made for like no money, as Adam can attest to. It was for the <laughs> longest time. It was an art department of Adam, Mike Stein, and I think that was it. David, for, the long, yeah. for the longest time, there was just two guys there. It's one of the unfortunate things because the producer on that movie, who's a very good friend of both Adam and I, now lives with every time art department starts to get too big, he always says, you know how many people Adam Stockhausen had? <laughs> and, you know, for the longest time... <laughs> You know, it always becomes that thing where once a movie is made in a certain type of, you know, and people know that movie, you're like, oh, oh okay, why do you have to? And I'll never forget that. And Adam, that was my first really, you know, where Adam and I were at the hip because I also had no department and we were at the hip in terms of, you know, building a schedule and finding, you know, all these places to shoot this movie. Um, I just actually just had that memory right then as you were, as you, before, as you were telling one of your stories, I'm like, oh my God, that just came back to me as a, with a, with, with, with a flush of energy. Um, but if I could jump in, that, that, that on, that, on that film, the, the, and I, uh, the, it's a story that I, that I like to tell you about, the, about that early relationship, right? Where, where you're trying to figure out the basic plan for the movie. And there was, a, there was a problem on that movie with the Syracuse, New York stuff and how, how that section of the movie uh, could be made without doing a giant uh, you know, crew base move uh, to somewhere in the Northeast, 
right? And so it was a lot of head scratching and wandering around and trying to figure out if there was a, um, a street in the French Quarter that we could, that we could turn into, uh, believably, uh, a, a street in, in, in the north. And then, and, then, uh, and then taking a big chunk of the work out of uh, the sort of Moon's Tavern and, and that street area and moving it into the park and doing the Saratoga Springs, um, uh, Springs constructions and and giving and, and the idea of having Solomon when he's free being being in the park and enjoying life and having that freedom in a way that would come back uh, with a with a mirror image of that uh, when 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 he's in Louisiana um, and and those are the kind of questions that you're sorting out at the very very early stage of the job with 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 very few people and it's just uh, you know uh, three or four people in a van trying trying to trying to figure out how you can come up with an idea that's going to make a major difference financially in the production plan of the film and 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 make it possible or or you know or make it a lot more difficult yeah and i mean and you're absolutely right and that was you know and 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 as anyone you know as we've all and and had to go through these steps where you're making you know none of us no matter how big the budget you're you always there always is a need for more in a sense right people always say oh it, it, you know but you but it's the limitations that force you to come up with creative solutions yeah and you just kind of mentioned something which uh, uh, is uh i've always thought about an interesting idea and adam summer what do you think of this the idea that movies are made in the van right that it, like it, explain to young people like like what the process of the four or five creative groups being in a van, like how important that initial stages of just those, you know, the, the initial people moving around in a van, looking mm. at the locations, talking about the script, like, you know, th that's been for me, some of my best developmental ideas with directors I know is how you see the, the movie as, you know, you're kind of just sequestered with a small group, you know, like going around looking at locations going on scouting, you know? I mean, how, how does, does that work? I, I know obviously when you guys work with on with Steven, you guys are probably doing a lot of that legwork ahead of it, right? But before- Yeah, so like, but, it is, you, but you're right. And they, I mean, like, I think for, yeah, for example, with Steven, often then the, that next bit of van is, is hopefully us showing a plan to say Janusz in the sense of Steven, Really, Janusz, that's the next, that's the person you, you, one brings in next to it once Stephen's on board. You know, you get Janusz and, and Janusz will, you know, will push on certain things, but, you know, works with it, understands it, then he'll give his request of light and that process. But on other films, in, you know, indeed, in it is that sort of early, that scouting where you, you know, where you go through and you find the film. And, um, and it, I had a situation like on Wolf of Wall Street when I did that. And, I did these early scouts when I I came on quite late, about five weeks out from shooting, and but I went on these series of scouts with Rodrigo and Bob Shaw and and Marty and and you know and then the film that's when that film was built. You know what I mean? Mm. Working between the locations, the time, and the day, the thing, and then with the cameraman, obviously, because always one, you know, as the next relationship with designer, the cameraman is again is your friend. Well, you want him to be your friend. You don't want him to be as, as an AD. You do not want to have an, you don't want any enemies in any part of the film, but definitely <laughs> not the camera, but definitely not the joke to photography if you're going to start you know, at the top. But, you know, it's, a, it's an important relationship because he's going to, you, again, you help each other out. And obviously when you do a movie, your first thing you can try and give the cameraman as much as the things he would like for the movie, for the light and where you can protect things and where you can try and get there. And then you have the same way back where you go back and say, oh, you know, we can't do this. I mean, I can't, you know, this is impossible, obviously. We are going to be here between, you know, 11 o'clock and three o'clock in the afternoon. So we have to shoot something. So then make the plan of what that is. So, you know, all of those levels of, um, on the, on, in that van meeting, whether you're with the director, whether you're not with the director, but again, because you had, you had the, you had the, the director of photography, Usually in that first level of scouting, he's the first person who comes along on that van, you know, where you're in, where you're making the plan, not beyond the technical scout, which obviously which is, comes later. But yeah, no, it is indeed that it's the com and with the camaraderie again, and, and and getting to know people and getting to know everyone's sort of style of how they how they operate, and, you know. So it's important. Yeah. And and what about and Adam for you in terms of you know 
how, what's your reference style when you start something? How do you, in terms of your research and, you know, what do you, what do you visually, do you put something just together in your mind that you're constantly sharing with the, with the director and the DP, or does it evolve as the conversations are happening? Um, I, 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 it's a, it's a huge element uh, for me uh, uh, of how I work and, and, and I do a bunch of it on my own and I work with, um, with, with, with really amazing researchers, uh, particularly um, a woman named Emily Lurchens for the last uh, several years. And uh, it starts, you, you know, there's, there's like a first rush of research that happens right at the beginning to kind of get your feet wet and get into it. Um, because we're, we're often, uh, almost all the time, you, you, you're, you're trying to become as expert as you can become really, really fast in something that you had no knowledge of or very little knowledge of, uh, you know, just, just the week before. You know, so uh, on Bridge of Spies, for, for instance, you know, getting, getting really deep really quickly on the exact construction of, of uh, the Berlin Wall. And, you know, block by block, how it happened, when it happened, and, and, and looking at the, you know, very precise development of it. And then how the cities, the, you know, the other two halves of the city uh, uh, developed after the wall had been constructed. And, and so you, you do this kind of first flush of that research and that gets the conversation going, you know, with the, with the team. And then it gets more and more specific and more and more deep. And you, you start sort of drilling down on, on, on you know, individual things where, um, uh, now I'm thinking about 12 Years a Slave together where, it, where you're halfway through the project and, and, and you look again at the research and you dive really deep and suddenly we found this, this beautiful image of, of carrying blocks of ice uh, across the uh, across the, the 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 docks, and then and then we were able to discuss it and, and put it immediately into the film. Um, or that um, do you remember that amazing image we looked at of uh, one of the weighing houses where there was so much cotton in the air that it looked oh my like, god yeah it's like it looked atmosphere. like a blizzard yeah it looked like a blizzard and it and it was uh, so terrifying um, and and again somehow that 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 image. As you as you go back to it, as you look and go deeper and deeper and deeper, all the way through the project, you you find these threads and you 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 get to know your your material better as you go, and then you look again, and now you see it in a deeper and 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 uh, uh, and in more insightful way, and you're able to pull more out of it. But it's a constant process, I think. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. Um, yeah, I mean, and it's so funny. I just I just had a memory as you said that. Like I remember one time Steve McQueen you know, saying one time I asked him about his impetus for making an American movie about slavery. And he said to me, and I'll never forget this, he goes, you misunderstand what we're doing. We're making a story about a man who wants to get home to his family. Slavery is just the backdrop that stops him from doing that. And it's one of those things when I realized later on when people said to me, why do you think that movie of all like movies like resonated so much? I'm like, because it had a theme within it, right? A, that is universal beyond the idea of, of, of slavery. You know, it's, it's universal to every human being is the idea of person and family, you know, and it's just, it, it's just so funny. Like that was somehow how he envisioned, you know, one of the major thread tenets within the whole weaving of the architecture of the story. Um, but it, it, you know, and that brings me to a point in terms of research, Adam, I'm curious from your standpoint, obviously you've done a lot of, you know, period movies. I mean, how, granular do you get on the background concept um, in period movies, you know, and it's to, to try and pull some modern tendencies away from oh, yeah. individuals. Oh, yeah, well, that's the fun, that's the fun of the job. That's the fun bit that we get to do as an AD, hopefully, you know, well, if you, that's the lucky bit, I think, you know, and very, to dig into that level for the film, to, to have, you know, to find that look. I mean, I, I mean it's ref, starting with reference photographs, paintings and stuff, you know, and then to build those images and to, it, it is the most exciting, I mean, exciting part of, 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 of one of our jobs when we, um, our involvement and, and like with Adam on like Bridge of Spies, you know, we had great, we did our reference bits and we had, you know, I had my fave pictures and, and we took them and it was great that we, we found shots based on pictures, you know, there's an amazing image of it the woman being handed down from buildings on the other side of the wall between the east and west. And we found this house when we were scouting in Poland, they were a single house with an absolute sort of barren area right next to it, where it was all knocked down. 
and then another sort of derelict buildings that could have been war damaged, which was, you know, because Berlin was also scarred after, still scarred then after the Second World War. And just finding those images and, and, and finding that and finding that frame, so to speak, you know, obviously then you had to get reverses, but still the inspiration of finding that, and that excitement, I think, was specific in that film in Lincoln, you know, to, 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 to make that correct as much as possible. I remember, you know, all the senators, I remember this old mission I did with the senators because we, you know, we did the House of Representatives and we shot it in the in, in Richmond's, um, forget my uh, Senate or state capital, whatever it was, forgive my lack of knowledge of the, of the system, but um, it was amazing, but it was about one third or, you know, about, I mean, just under a third smaller than the House of Representatives. So then we had all the seats. So then I mean, I managed to get the map of who sat where and then try and build the whole sequence of where, because we ended up having 60 cast, 60 cast actors to play the senators for all these debates. And then to talk, try and plot. So obviously it was a thing that, you know, that I would take on board rather than the director because I, Stephen wouldn't do that. But that and that was lucky, was, I wanted to get a hold of it. So, you know, to build where everyone sat, to try and work out, like if he sat there, then that'd be good for that scene, right? Because then he's got a background, but I'll put him over. He said, oh, what's this bloke? But he, I, and, I, and it was like a, a fantastic challenge to do it, you know? And, and you know, and I thought, well, I won't, put, I won't put, tell Tommy Lee Jones where he's going to sit because he'll sit where he fucking wants. That's for sure. So I left him out of it. But basically, you know, I think it was 98 percent correct on the day. You know, so things like that. The re but trying to base it on research because it matters and it gives you something to to, to fight for. You know, in the sense of visually as the AD and something creative that you can put your creative energy into. I think is exciting. You know. So. Yeah, I love uh, personally. I love doing that too, especially on period movies and dealing with you know the art department, props, you know everyone in terms of okay, let's staging. You know, obviously staging. Mm. It's it's the world that is just one layer beyond the actors, right? But it's that layer that adds the authenticity that makes things real and doesn't feel like you know a, a stagnant moment if you're able to get that right. Because we yes. all know the three actors in front of camera, everyone's going to get that right. But if we can get that other layer and the layer beyond that right, then then you have something special. No, it's great. And it's always ch working children, children at work. <laughs> it's always like, <laughs> you'll have kids working in the scene. And that's always, it's, it's great. All those movies, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. make the that's kids sweet. run through with animals. It's a double. Yeah. You know, kids with papers and doing that. I remember that like kids with, you know, documents <laughs> running. Oh my God. No, that, that's great. No, it's so true in that. All the smalls and the details with props and art department, it is exciting. And that's, and with the designer, with, like with Adam, when we, all the stuff we did on the Bridge of Spies was, was amazing to try, where we had the construction of the wall and trying to, and the machinery and how to carve up this sequence. Because like, we only went to Poland for like five weeks. We, you know, we shot the movie in New York for New York and then Berlin for Berlin. But this one section of five days, um, we moved to Poland. But there was the, where there was a town which still was some areas of, of, of um, really under, underdeveloped streets and avenues and these kind of almost bomb sites from a small area of like almost blitzed land. And so we went there and shot five days for the basically the big stuff of the, the wall being built and that mm -hmm. sequence. And and to go there with Adam Barcelos and sort of, you know, go there once and then go back to the hotel and come back the next day and try and build a cohesive plan that you could say, well, how many, well, we didn't want to go to Poland. It's another location, it's another hub, but it's got to be thought for because th this is, this has got to be, this has got to stay, you know, something's got to, else may go, but this was a keeper in the sense of what, for the movie's look, scale, uh, and just the texture of the location. So that mm -hmm. was to be fought for. So, you know, and again, that relationship, you know, we're having this, this is not an option for, in a sense, you know, as, as one could, and then something um, that we do too, if I could, if I could jump in on that, is yeah, is, yeah. is is like the 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 La Poland sequence in that film in particular. It doesn't just line up perfectly. You know, it's not like you take a a slug from from the script and it's just like boom, there it is, and there's the next one, and there's the next one. It's much more like we 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 get to this site that's obviously great and obviously has the right feel, and then it's this it's this like Tetris project of how do we how can we twist and turn and get the different pieces to work in here? And, and how can we take one background and shoot it for, um, uh, for, for, for the boy being arrested with his manuscript for uh, Tom Hanks walking across no man's land for the S-Bahn travel, um, uh, uh, 
you know, uh, with the with the people jumping over the wall and getting shot for Tom, for Tom Hanks pulling up in the car to Checkpoint Charlie and for the nighttime reverse sequence at Checkpoint Charlie is all one location and how can we uh, you know how can we be clever about using it in a way that we can not step on our own feet and try to figure out how to take this amazing beautiful thing and 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 twist it and turn it so that it can line back up with the needs of the script and it takes a lot of pacing around and staring and scratching your head yeah that's the thing and and, and having the dp looking at the sky and telling you not to look in certain directions at certain times i was just trying to be like wait that could have gone oh no no i get it i mean that's the thing you know a couple of weeks ago uh i had darius who's an old i've done several movies with darius and he was just he said something he's like you know, he's like, I love working with you because you're so conscious of the light. And I said, you know, truthfully, I think like in a previous life, I was like a DP or something. So, and I re respect the process. So it's like, I try and give you as much as like Adam, like you were saying, like it's a negotiation. We'll give you as much as we can, you know, in that, you know, 90 minutes of perfect light, but Jesus, we're going to be out here for three, four more hours before that. We got to shoot something else, you know, like let, 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 let's, let's negotiate on that now. Um, mm -hmm. That's always the thing, as you said, when it's like you're just trying to figure out how to do so many different things yeah. in a movie in one, one area, how to just keep rounding around, you know? Um, I love that. Um, there was now, uh, so now that we've talked a little bit about period, I'm curious, Mr. Stockhausen, for you, you've touched so many different types of genres. Is there anything? You know, from from obviously dealing with sci-fi to contemporary to is there is there one versus the other that you find more appealing from a creative sense? Not not more appealing, uh, really. I mean, it's all I, I think so much of the, the joy of this uh, job is that you get to dive into a new pool all the time. You get to go in and figure out a new thing and. And, and find out what makes it tick. And that's incredibly exciting. And, and uh, um, so, so I, you know, I wouldn't say I prefer one or, or the other. I will say the period stuff in a sense, is, in a, like it seems more complicated because there's all this period stuff, but in a, but, but in a very real way, it's, it's, it's more straightforward because there's all that period stuff because that stuff is recorded. You can go and look at it. You can find out what the right answer is, you know, in terms of how did this look? Like what, what did the Berlin Wall look like? That's something that I can go and I can find out brick by brick the truth of, of that. Um, but when you get into science fiction, when we, we start dealing with the stuff that we were dealing with on Ready Player One, then those rules don't exist anymore and you have to make them up. You, know, you have to you have to make up your own rules for it, and that in a in a way can be a, a, a an awfully daunting uh, thing to to get involved with. Yeah, that's just, just trying to trying to invent what the world looks like. You know, it's like what what does a fork look like in uh, two hundred and fifty years from now? Is it still a fork or is it something different? Then you have to become a you have to become a product designer as well, right? Yeah, and and absolutely, and but any and also just what the, the 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 rules that that not just the historical details but but a lot of the sort of basic rules of how things are shaped and how doors work and how chairs work and how you know it, it's all it's all up for grabs really when when you know when when we're uh when we're dealing with planet doom and and ready player one you know it it, it it it's it's a it's a whole new it's a whole new thing yeah, and and as you're saying that, and 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 Adam Sumner, for you in in this in the you know you, uh, so many of the movies you've done are so grounded, or either, either historical or the present grounded. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Ready Player One being one, um, visual effects wise. I mean, even Ford versus Ferrari felt like it was a lot of practical stuff. Wasn't uh, you know obviously you had to have some visual effects there, but very grounded in reality, right? Am, am I correct about that? Yes, I mean, yes, all the race, yeah, I mean, there was very little CGI in the racing stuff. There was, you know, second unit shooting, you know, racing footage with stunt doubles, first unit shooting, all the pits real with the cars coming in and out. And then, you know, these talk. and then, you know, Christian really drove a car. Sometimes, sometimes he was in a car which he was driven on the guy on the top, the pod thing. Sometimes he was towed, you know, depending on what the shot needed. So it was, it was very much a practical thing. The crowd stuff was amazing. They did with the, uh, you know, uh, augmentation of, um, of all the crowd stuff, the additional stuff and the Le Mans stuff, particularly some of the big stuff they did there. I think it's very good. 
And then they added cars in, you know, they added the cars in the background, the cars on the far side, just because we couldn't get, you know, the, just because of cost that we had, you know, our group of cars. So, right. but it was, it was like a sort of old fashioned sort of, you know, Californian sort of made movie, you know, so it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I got Tracy Letts, I think right after you had worked with him and he was yeah like a kid in the candy shop talking about like being in, the car, I guess, maybe use the biscuit rig or something like that. Like, oh yeah, when they drive him around that scene, yeah, going yeah. like over a hundred miles an hour, practically in a car. Like he was just like, you know, he would he told the story like, you know, like a seventeen year old on a joyride. <laughs> no, it was it was fun. It, it was funny. It was a kind of you know, a sort of throwback movie, I suppose. You know what I mean? Of a sort of period, isn't it? Not many films are made like that now. So it was it was fun and it was a good experience. It was planes and cars and hot tarmac. <laughs> burning you every day you know but it was pretty good very good you know, experience have you and um, also you know any films about cell phones are good as well you know what i mean like any movies for you know any period i mean i like the period thing because you anything before the cell phone came in i could enjoy you know yeah creatively and uh, and, and <laughs> having to do it you know what i mean when you some, i hate when you go on a scene and say look at your phones that's your action because that's what you <laughs> know when other, everyone fucking just looks at their phone and like, <laughs> that's background action you know? right but at least that's what the, like, get the background yeah. actors know how to do these days. They all know how to look at their phones. So exactly, I want to get them to smoke a pipe and read a paper and follow. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm... Oh, it's it, it's wonderful. You've got some great old school tendencies like that. Yeah, I, exactly. I, everyone I, everyone smoke a pipe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it is. It's you know, as as the the rules change on us uh, so much. I mean, people were. You know, obviously, I've been doing a lot of, you know, uh, back and forth with groups and discussions about what are things going to look like when we go back. And it's like, you know, well, it's what, what people are saying. I keep telling people, I go, what everyone's talking about right now is not the way that people really know how to make movies. So this way of, you know, how we have to be smaller and everything, I think it's the old in order to get back to the old way of making movies, like, you know, this thing has to be under control because the idea of everyone going to set and really you know, working in very small groups or not being able to work together, you know, it's very hard, right? We're all kind of like pack animals that have been, we almost have to reach uh, everyone yeah. how to move around a set, right? That's the difficult. Yeah, well, I just, I just did a shoot the other day, a commercial, you know, and we were, you know, COVID protocols, of course, you know, and we wore masks and face and that, and that was fine. We were in shooting the Staples Center and that was fine. You know, that you got used to that. I mean, one of the tendencies, though, as human beings, you know, is that people gather, even though you, you know, and then you, you know, people talk and then suddenly you're three people around a monitor, you're talking and you suddenly go, oh, oh, you're not going to do this, get away, spread out everyone. <laughs> and I'd have to keep saying, you know, like, oh, Christ, yeah, everyone should spread out, guys, come on. I mean, we had people helping us and watching and doing that. But, I, you know, I, I, but I think every due diligence was taken. I mean, it, you know. Would you want to do the rest of your one's one's life? No one does, certainly would not. But obviously, you can, if one has to do it now, I think it's doable, and it's just a, it's going to need planning and thinking through the pro, you know, the project. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of those things. I'm hoping I'm going to face that problem very soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in a sense, so. Um, but indeed. It's like the old days, you know what I mean? <laughs> one of the yeah. old days. No, it's going to be a new layer. Like literally talking about how you know, working in conjunction directly with the art department, the locations department. I mean, the whole idea of, you know, how things have to be people tested, things clean, people living in, you know, in, in pods and bubbles, different layers. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people having a lot of discussions. I mean, we'll see as people start to really ramp up. As you said, there's just some commercials have started shooting, some, you know, maybe some TV stuff here or there, mm -hmm. nothing really in epicenters. Um, but I think we're, you know, we're, we're pretty close to things really starting up. So it's going to, it's going to be a learning process for like, you know, died in the world veterans such as ourselves, like how to, you know, yeah, rule, well, rule the process. No, I, I mean, I'm, you know, we're meant to hopefully we start a new, new Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson film next week, prepping it. And it's, you know, and already the idea I think is one's going to have to, it's going to be all about the prep, I think, is my new the thing is, is, I'm not so sort of concerned about the hours. I think the main thing is going to be you're going to have to use use the time wisely. You're going to have you're going to have enough time. I think it's going to be going into a place, understanding the shots, understanding lighting, making your plans, 
so you can preset as much gear as possible to re, you know, re, get rid of those bottlenecks of loading in, loading out. Additional prep time on either location, wrap time, swinging in and out of sets, but being prepped is going to be the answer. Know your shot, know your light, mark. Yeah, I mean, on this commercial, we marked, we had lots of stuff to do. We marked every single shot up. You know, it was Rig and Ledge with the director and Ma Matthew Labatique was, was, was shooting it and it was very efficiently done and a lot, and like, okay, like every job one ever does, there's too much work to do, but, 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 it was a, but there was no fault of the way the procedure was done. And, you know, and it was very safely handled with the actress because she, um, she obviously unmasked and that's what you do. No one, everyone wears a mask unless you're the actress or the, or the cast or the background artist who's working. And it's about protecting them, I guess, is really the main thing about this. But it was, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. it's it's you know it's it's going to be a little bit of a new world order. I mean, we'll see how long we have to stick with it, you know, to get mm. used to it. But it's going to be you know a little bit of a learning process for all of us because everyone does want to get back to work, and you know, it's 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 happening in different fits and starts. As you were saying, you know, I've been loosely prepping something on and off that we were about eight weeks out from shooting before the lockdown came, and you know, I mean, just trying to refigure the plans. As 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 you know, it's like. It's the, the actor puzzle that had been figured out for yeah. you know, it was an 18 month process, right? Like the actor puzzle, like what their next three projects are and how it fillets. Right, right. Yes, like, indeed. That is a fuck up, I'm sure. <laughs> what I try to say to everyone, I go, well, this is the whole new thing right now is we're kind of yeah. refit, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a rejiggy, you know, it's not like everything just slid because some projects leapfrogged and claimed parts of time yeah. next year, you know, especially, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, so it's uh that's going to be, you know, the difficulty of it, because, you know, one of the things, you know, that has been a very difficult thing in the last three, four years that uh, Mr. Sumner, I'm sure you're going to attest to is the fact that, you know, every actor works now, right? With the, this is the golden age of content. So you get an actor who's on a movie, but he's also doing a show on Netflix and doing a this. It's like yeah, the yeah, yeah, puzzle yeah. has become yes. so hard to put together, you know, mm -hmm. and now when the floodgates open and everyone gets out at the same time, it's going to be interesting to see how the jockeying for slots, not just for numbers one, two, and three, but all the other actors that you need on the call sheet, you know, who are just going to start as work starts popping up being all, I mean, that's like, there's, there's so many undiscussed aspects of the returning to work thing. And I think that once the bottleneck opens up, it's going to be figuring out, Oh, how do we get the actors we want? Do we wait? Do we not go? It's a, it's going to be a trick. Yeah, very true. Yeah, very true. Um, we shall see. It's going to be a trick. And so, but Adam, you're, you're so, you're just kind of, you're in loose drawing mode, right? You're conceptualizing for a job yeah. right now, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's, uh, that's, that's the one thing I always enjoy, at least about, you know, the, the one thing that makes it difficult, I always say from aspect of what Mr. Sumner and I do is the fact that, you know, it's like we get thrown, we get thrown in while the water's already starting to boil, right? You, 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 get, you get a little bit of a chance to think about what ingredients to put into the, the pot before someone lights the flame. You know, it's like, that's gotta be a, a, a nice part of the process. Right, right, <laughs> right, it is, it is. And, 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 it's, and, it's a, and it's a part of the process that, that works very well with, with, this, uh, with remote working and, and, and work from home. And you're able to screen share uh, with, with people who are illustrating and you can, you, can, you can work together very closely, but you don't have to be in the same room together. And that's that's something that was that was developing and becoming mainstream, uh, you know, forgetting about the pandemic, and so it, it works very naturally um, now in this in this new time. Okay, uh, oh, someone just uh, two people just sent in a question to me. They're very curious about for you, Mr. Sumner. Uh, so I'm going to ask it. It was one. Um, the question is: Ask Adam about working in Cambodia and the challenges. Also about working with. Um, a female director in Angelina, as you mostly have always worked with men. Like what? what were yeah, you yeah. That was a, uh, it was a fabulous experience all around. That film was yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, I remember reading the script, uh, and you know, and um, um, just here and you know, very. I mean, just you know, as, as again, since I was a parent, anything involves children, you know, I just sort of weep my eyes out. But it was, but it was this amazing story. So. And, and again, it was a situation where it was five weeks from shooting and and I think unfortunately someone had to leave the film. So they asked me to come out and take over. So I flew out and met Angie and I, you know, I've never worked with her before as an actress, but you know, she, she was great. You know, she was really like, 
I mean, she was a she she was she was fabulous. She was a great leader, and and it was a great experience as a film. It was um, you know it was a fully Cambodian cast, and it was kind of like I would imagine like an old fashioned movie. You know, we didn't have trainers, we didn't have anything like that. We had a couple of buses, these old buses with these like terrible little fans that were <laughs> hardly air conditioned. One for the men, one for the women, one for the kids, and and the kids split split up with these buses, and they all carved up and they. Angie didn't have anything. She just, you know, we went to the same toilet. It wasn't too clever, I can tell you that, especially <laughs> after lunch. It was horrendous. But everyone shared the same thing. But it was it was such a like a feeling of a camaraderie like that. And also then working through with the Cambodians and such a large amount of people. And they were such generous people to us. And making this uh, a story, which again, without sounding, you know, sounding you know, sort of pious, it was, you know, we were telling this country's story of, uh, of their genocide. And it was really one generation um, back. So incredibly real still, incredibly real for people. Everyone you would meet in the hotel would have, you know, relations and people that were involved. So it was exciting in that way to be respectful, to tell this story. And they were such nice people and generous to us as well. And um, Angie, you know, is Cambodian as well, nationality. And she's obviously, very, you know, does a lot of, charity stuff and NGO stuff in the country. And um, so it meant a lot to do it for her. And, and, and it was, a, and with large crowd scenes and to work with the crowd and the extras, like big scenes that were very, again, it was a challenge. I mean, every level of that film was a challenge, but such an exciting one, you know, because the people were so nice and just to work with them to get performances as well, to try and get performances and work with them and with these, you know, young Cambodian assistants of us that were great, but they didn't really know what they were in for, you know, these sort of brutally hot days. And, you know, I think every day that eventually dropped by the wayside because it was physically very hard and, you know, but, but they all came back up every day, kept going. And it was just, it was, it was a great experience in, in, in so many ways, that movie. Yeah. And, and working with Angie was great. And I never worked with a female director. I mean, in a sense, I really don't see uh, that, that idea. I don't see it as a male or female as a director. You know, it's sort of, it's, it's for me as a director is, it's a being. You know, it's 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 the director. It's the gut. You know, it's the boss. It's the person one works for, and you know whatever it is, you want to get the best of that relationship. You know, and not to, not. Not that I'm saying is you're just a subservient, but you're, you're the working relationship to, 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 to help that director make their film and help them where they need. Directors will need different things from you in different areas and different times. Uh, and that navigation of that experience is what is exciting and, and, and what is um, is the challenge of working as an AD. And the thing that, that stimulates me today still, you know, a different director working with someone new or going back to the same director and trying to maintain one's sharpness and not being familiar and not not falling in. I think that's the challenge that makes it exciting. And Angie, for me, was just just that director. You know what I mean? And um, and so I, I saw that. But it was a, it was a very enjoyable working with her. And I, you know, I look forward to hopefully doing it again with her sometime. You know, yeah, that, that's a great way great way of putting it. Because over the years, I've worked with several female directors, and I agree, couldn't agree with one hundred percent more. It's a director is a director. I don't I never think of it as a man or a woman. It, it's like it's that creative entity that you're there to help support and drive the process through. Whether it's a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. It's like, this is who I'm paired up with right now and we're gonna make this amazing thing together. That's why we try and do this, you know? But I couldn't yes. agree with you 100%. I've never thought of there being a, a differentiation, even though clearly in our business people have, but I, I've never seen it that way, you know? Yeah, and I think, you know, I think maybe the only thing I think once, you know, as a, and again, as assistant director, you know what I mean, in, that, in, the, in your defensive, your, you know, your first reaction will be defensive, to be defensive of your director. And I think maybe if I ever saw any kind of attitude, I would find myself like, you know, the, 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 the guard dog growling and sort of step, you know, like sort of like, like sense then sort of like, you know, <laughs> are you fucking sure? Are you, you know, I was like, yeah. maybe that was the, the only, maybe that was the only thing I maybe was aware of sometimes, you know, but, but in the sense of our doing my job and our, how, how we do our job and, and work, for the project, I think it was. There's no difference, you know. Yeah. There's no difference. To the director, you know. So. He, uh, he brought something up, uh, Stockhausen, that I wanted to mention. Obviously, it's very well known within our industry, amongst people within the industry, how you know, you know, Wes moves very light. Like the crew is built very light, 
you know, it's not like what we're used to in terms of the huge 18 wheelers, this, that, and the other, he likes to be very mobile, you know, and, uh, and so how does that kind of, how's that affected you over the years in your mindset when you know that, you know, Wes really wants things to be light and tight and not be about, you know, tons of options or big trucks all over the place. Yeah. I mean, it's very freeing actually, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it it's incredibly fun as well, you know, because you can, you can, you can, you can do stuff that is very difficult to do uh, when you're, when you're doing things the normal way, you're just, you're much lighter on your feet. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm thinking of um, uh, uh, Moonrise Kingdom and there was this, there was this shot looking out over this lake or pond with a, with a, with a, with a basketball hoop sunk half, halfway into it. And, 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 and Wes wanted it to be, you know, really dark and overcast. And we just kept getting sunny days. And, and so we, uh, we would, we would, we would try to shoot it and it would just be too sunny and we'd have to peel off and say, forget it. Let's, let's do something else. And we were able to, <laughs> like, we were able to have a contingency plan and, and literally blow the whistle and say, nope, everyone had, everyone head over to the linens and things that was our stage and we'll go shoot something there and and uh and we could send people out to check and it was me one day to go out and check and say you know i think the weather's terrible <laughs> and which mean which means it's perfect let's go you know and, and and i was able to to call up and say i think i think now's the time and and we were able to say okay pack it up pack up the sprinters and let's go and 11 minutes later the whole company's on the road and that's that's really fun, you know. And and it and it and it opens your mind a little bit to say, how can you, you know, the, the rules that we think are are written in stone not, aren't necessarily so. And and how can we always be thinking about, uh, you know, an outside of the box solution to 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 the problems and say, I know this is unconventional, I know this is weird, but but what if? you know, just go with me here. We, you know, we do this, this crazy thing and then we can switch to something else. And, and, uh, and, and if you sort of get into that mindset, it, 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 it really makes it, it really makes it uh, fun to start solving problems. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about you, Mr. Sumner, but I love that. I love it when you can be light and tight and not worry about like, you know, really just, it has, and I'll be honest, it hasn't happened to me in a long time, but I just, oh, you know, those kind of projects, I always just remember it's like, you know, where you could load stuff into like, you know, three vans and like and yeah. then up somewhere in 20 minutes and shoot something yeah i guess they're rare they're rarer but they can they can happen but it's hard it always it, yeah it always gets a bit overcooked and you're always battling away <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and i, I think the, 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 there's always like there's a certain cameraman who's always like who the fuck are all these people to me and i'm going to work for you they're not fucking my people they're all your people look i'm out on my own well, it's, it's also, six, I think it's also been six or seven. I mean, it's like, what's that thing, you know? And I mean, it's, it always makes me laugh. And especially with the digital revolution, right? The digital hasn't made it any lighter, right? They, they require so much more now with the dit and this, where it used to be, let's just take the film camera, put it on a sandbag over here, get an exposure, you know, and do it. It's, it's, it's interesting. Like, you know, people, yeah, yeah. I, I, yes. I mean, I'm not anti digital, but I must admit, I'm lucky. I work with blokes. I do a lot of work. We still use film. So I'm always a bit caught out with the dit. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, I know. There's very good ones like Arthur and those guys. They're very good. They're very good chaps who do it. But it's no. But initially, it's not. It's not in my uh, basic training. You know, that's, a, that's an add-on feature that I've had to learn. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've learned it well. But yeah, I, I agree. It, it's funny. Just like vinyl is making a comeback. I mean. You know, a lot of these younger filmmakers, especially the ones we've been talking to lately, are, are loving getting out, shooting on film, shooting on 16, especially a lot of like, you know, commercial spots and, you know, some shows are. It's really interesting. There's something, you know, and they're rediscovering saying, you know, they call it, you know, an, the film look. And it's the idea of, well, wh instead of trying to go for the film look, let's shoot on film, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's, no, but I'm very lucky to like with Paul Thomas Anderson and Steven Spielberg and, Martin Scorsese, all you know, in a sense, are you know part of the part of the foundation to say film. So obviously, whenever they can, they shoot film. You know, what I mean, whenever they can, and obviously, there's times that they can't, but the majority of times they do. You know, so yeah, it's good. And it's it's an interesting point, Stockhausen. For you, visually, do you approach anything aesthetically different if you know it's going to be digital or film, or is it all the same to you in terms of color palette choices or textures of material? Does anything change for you? 
depending on the medium of shooting or not at all? Um, the, uh, well, not, 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 not really, because I think whatever, whatever medium you're in, the, the goal is to have the, 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 the discussions about look and about color and about texture and about all that up front, and then to be testing that, right? So that, so that by the time you actually get to the point of shooting, you kind of know what the end product, you know, how it's going to behave given your medium, right? So you can go through that process to achieve where you want to get no matter what you're doing. Um, uh, but, but I'll say, like Adam was saying, I've had this good fortune that most of the projects that I've been working on lately have been on film. Um, uh, and we've, you know, even been, been, been shooting in black and white, which is a whole different process of figuring out how things behave. Um, so, you know, it, it, but, but you, you, you go at it up front so that you're not surprised. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because there is this ongoing discussion about, you know, I just did um, an Adrian line movie and, you know, Adrian, oh, yeah, right. cool. yeah. <laughs> he hadn't directed a movie in 18 years, you know? Yeah. And um, I mean, you know, his, you know, he's on 78, 79 years old. We were getting to doing this movie and we we're going to shoot it on digital. And he, and what he got excited about as we started to shoot and do tests was the speed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said to me, he goes, he goes, you know, everyone used to call me slow. He goes, but what used to, he goes, but he goes, but I would honestly, he's like, I would wait three hours a day for the DP to light his thing. He's like, now, we, we, you know, we had Igo Brill, who's a w wonderful DP. we like, you know, all available light coming in the window or like 10, 15 minutes to do something. It was like Adrian would almost get exhausted because he had to do so much directing, you know, as opposed to like waiting around for the DP to light the set, you know? He was just like, wow, this is like, I, I can really, I'm really doing a lot of work. It was like, you know, it, it, interesting to see for someone who had never touched the medium before, like what, you know, that type of aspect of it. Um, well, I think, I mean, I want to say, guys, this has been great. This has been a really enjoyable conversation, at least for me. At this point, I don't yeah. care about the other people out there, what they think. I've had a good time talking to you guys. That's part of the beauty of this. Like, you don't, you're, you're, you almost get like, we're just having a conversation. You forget that there's like this, this virtual world of people like on YouTube links on Zoom like watching us at this point, you know? Um, but I really appreciate, I know, you know, it's on getting you two together on this day before the holiday weekend, whether that means something to people these days, I don't know, as I was explaining to Adam before, as I, you know, I'm doing my best to stay away from the busy places that, you know, my teenage kids claim we have to go to. So it's like, I'm having a parental dilemma um, with that at this point. But what I do want to do is, uh, we next week, uh, just give me one second here. I've all of a sudden I've lost control of my computer technical problems. Uh, wow, this is strange. Um, hold on. Uh, have we been hacked? Is that what it is? I, I sure hope we haven't been hacked. No, it's exactly. Just, it's, 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 it's controlling my desktop, unfortunately. I'm plugging my phone in. Sorry, uh, <laughs> uh, my technical issue. Yeah, yeah, no, uh. Uh, okay, so what I do want to say is, all right, so I, I just wanted to give a quick, uh, for everyone out there, if you don't know already, Bradford Young is going to be leading our next talk on Tuesday, July 7th at 8 o'clock. He will be talking with uh, director David Lowry and production designer Jade Healy. They all kind of broke out together in, on the 213 movie, Ain't These Body Saints, and all three of them have had pretty amazing you know, uh, careers apart from and together with each other. So that should be a great one when we talk about teamwork to understand how these three who started out, you know, you know, almost 10 years ago together and have all kind of grown up in the business, um, you know, how they've been able to keep their uh, relationships intact creatively. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, but guys, really, thank you for showing up and talking to everyone here and talking to me, importantly because um, that's what I take from these things. It's just me and a couple of buddies having a conversation. Um, but I really appreciate your time and I hope everyone out there that uh, you've enjoyed this talk. I've learned a few things um, and I wish you both luck with your projects that you're you know, both kind of starting. I'm just glad I was able to get my hooks into both of you, especially you Sumner, because I knew that you were going off to the PTA thing. So now 
I can say I got you on one of these shows. Oh, I hope I am very soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check the message in a minute. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Listen, it was great. Guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Bye. Yeah. It was a really pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks.